If you've ever taken a photo that you knew had potential to be great, but you couldn't quite figure out how to get it there in the edit, then this video might be your answer. For example, I took this photo of a juvenile bald eagle that feels like it could be pretty epic, but that plain blue sky in the background is just super boring. So we need somehow to fix it. But a basic mask just doesn't do the trick. We're gonna need to go a bit deeper if we want to turn it into this, or this, or even this. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now, you may already be using masks to enhance your photos, but what I want to do is show you a few more advanced tricks in Lightroom that will allow you to refine your process and take that image to the next level and give you some different creative options to choose from. So, secure the cup and let's jump into it. So this is the image that we're gonna be working with today. It's one of those images where I really love how the subject looks, but the background is super boring and I wanna add something a little bit more to it. But before we get into those, I do wanna quickly go over everything that I've already done to this image because this is slightly edited at this point, just so you can get the whole picture of everything that's happened going into this image. So I'm gonna reset everything for now and walk you through everything that I've done quickly here. So in our basic panel, I did do a bit of a shift in my green magenta tint. Then we've got some exposure stuff going on here. So I've brought down exposure, up contrast, down highlights and up shadows. We had a bright background and a dark foreground or a dark subject. So I wanted to make sure to bring that out. Then I've got a bit of a tone curve going on here. So we've got just a, a little boost in the contrast in the middle here and then a bump down in the black. So before and after on that contrast curve. The color mixer is actually doing quite a bit here. So in the hue, I'm bumping down the blue to be a bit more of a teal. That's just a personal preference. I don't like my blues to look too purpley. Then in the saturation, I'm bringing a bunch of stuff down because it just felt really intense. That blue is just, just way too much. So I'm bringing down blue, aqua, green and a little bit of yellow and orange because it just felt like a little too much as well. And then if we go over to luminance, I'm bringing down the brightness of green and blue. So that's just gonna affect these pines as well as the brightness of the sky itself. I'm not doing anything in color grading. If we go into detail, I am bringing up some sharpening here. The default it sets it to is 40. I brought it up to 65. And then I just used the masking to make sure that it was only doing the stuff that I actually wanted it to add sharpening to. And then the only other thing that I touched was in the effects, a little bit of post crop vignetting, just the kind of default one that's in there. If I wanna do any more, or I'll do it with a mask. And speaking of masks, there are a couple of masks already on here. First of all, I've got a subject mask where I am just adding a little bit of exposure and a little bit of the shadows back in. Again, I'm trying to make that subject pop a little bit more. And then in the point color, I've gone in and chosen a color somewhere on the feathers and just increased the saturation and brought down the luminance. It just makes those dark browns look a little bit more kind of intense. I've also added a little bit of texture, clarity, and dehaze. This is really subtle, but it just makes it kind of look sharper or look like the subject is popping a little bit more. And then apparently I added one sharpness. I think this was just a mistake. I don't think this is actually something that I was trying to do. But if you can see that one sharpness, you let me know in the comments. The next mask that I have going on was just a brush mask that I did over the yellow part. So we've got a little bit of yellow up in the beak area here, and then obviously on the talons as well. And I'm just enhancing the yellow and I just increased the saturation and brought up the luminance a little bit. I also shifted the hue over a little bit. So it was a bit more of an orangey yellow. And you can see that that makes a big difference for the talons and for that beak area. And then this other mask that I have on there right now is over the eye. So if we zoom in, we can see it's just like a little radial mask over the eye. I brought down some blue. There was some blue in the reflection of that. So I brought down the saturation in that using the point color and brought up the luminance of it because it was in the reflection part. So I wanted that to be a little bit more intense. Then I also grabbed the point color and clicked on the kind of yellow that's in the eye. And I increased the saturation of that a little bit so it would stand out a bit more. And there's also a bump in the exposure and contrast on the eye as well, just to make that eye stand out a little bit more, especially when you're zoomed out like this, it just kind of makes that eye really pop. 
So again, we've gone from this to this. So now it's time to use some of those tricks that I mentioned at the start to make this photo even better. But to understand the three different versions of this edit that I'm gonna show you, first we need a quick primer on add, subtract, and intersect functions in Lightroom. So really quickly, I'm gonna make a linear gradient and I'm gonna drop it down from the top and I'm just gonna bring up the exposure. So we've got that linear gradient coming down from the top, but we can click on that mask and choose add. And then if I choose something like brush. I can then brush in down on the picture. And now we've got the linear gradient and that brush working together with whatever settings we've got on the right hand side. And you can see the individual masks and how they're combined on this mask layer. You can also hide them if you want, individual ones, so you can try a bunch of different combinations, and we can delete if we want to get rid of any specific mask within that mask layer. The opposite is also true, so if we click subtract and I choose a brush, then I can go in and draw anywhere where the mask is already being used. So the linear gradient is kind of our main part of the mask and the brush is subtracting from it. And then the third thing that we can do, if we go to our linear gradient to again and we click the three dots or if we right click on linear gradient and choose intersect mask with and just for example let's choose a brush again here now when i draw with that brush you can see it's created a brush line there the linear gradient is still there but it's only actually applying to places where they both happen at the same place so they both have to intersect for it to be working and you can see that by the fact that it actually does still have the gradient from the linear gradient but it's the line that i drew in the mask so this is kind of like filtering your masks to places where they both intersect, hence the name intersect. So now that we understand the tools, how exactly can we use them to make our background look better? The first thing that we're gonna do is try to do kind of a natural looking light source. So as we can see from this side of the eagle, the light is coming from the right. So what we're gonna do is try to enhance that. And the first way that we're gonna do that is by adding a linear gradient and coming in from the right hand side, something like this and then we're going to increase the exposure maybe bump up the highlights and the whites a little bit and the background looks really cool but as you can see it's affecting a lot of our subject and we don't necessarily want that to happen so what we can do here is we can subtract and then choose select subject now, just like when we subtracted using a brush, it's now going to take away from that linear gradient, but in this case, it's going to take away the subject and it does a really good job of selecting the subject there. And so now if we look before and after, we've got a lot more shape in our sky. We've got a lot more of an interesting background and it looks like he's staring off into the sun. This is maybe a little more intense than I would like it. Now, one thing that we might wanna to touch up a little bit here, we can see that our mask, even though we chose select subject, Project, it's still hitting the right side of the eagle and it's doing a lot to this part of the tree down here in the bottom right corner. So what we might want to do is try and figure out a way to take it away from those sections as well. So what we can do is go to our linear gradient, hit those three dots, intersect mask with, and go to color range. Then we're just going to select the color range of the sky. And if we hit O to see our mask again, you can see that it's now no longer affecting that tree so much. It's no longer on this wing of the eagle here. So we've got a much more only background, only the sky portion of the image that we're affecting. Now, you have to be a little bit careful about this because sometimes this can look a little too strange if it's too hard of a line around the edge. And if that's the case, what you can do is go in, add a brush, turn down your density or turn down your flow and just draw in along some of those edges so that it softens it out a little bit. I don't actually mind it on this one. It doesn't seem to be causing too many issues for me. Now, the only other thing that I might want to do is actually make this gradient a little bit darker on the right hand side. And to do that, what we can do is click on the little three dots of the entire mask layer. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate the mask. Now it's gonna duplicate all the settings as well. So it's like really, really intense now. And then what I'm gonna do is go to the linear gradient. I'm going to click the three dots and I'm going to invert. You can also click invert over here if you want. And so now it's applying the linear gradient the opposite direction, but we've still got it leaving out the eagle and leaving out anything that isn't blue. So it's still just on the background. And then we can go in, if we hold option or alt, we can reset our tone 
and then we can actually darken down the right hand side. So now we've just intensified that kind of gradient that we've added to the background. So this is what we had before, and then we added those two masks, and we get this, a much more interesting photo. Now, let's delete those masks and try something completely different. With this second edit, we're gonna do something a bit less natural and more stylized by creating a kind of glowing look behind the bald eagle, which will also act as a bit of a vignette to draw the eye towards the subject. So for this, what I'm gonna do is create a new mask and I'm gonna go with a radial gradient. I'm gonna make it quite big here and make sure that the feather is set to 100. And I'm going to increase the exposure until I get kind of a cool vignette. But again, we can see that because it's just a basic radial gradient at this point, it's affecting everything. And what I want this to do is look like it's coming from behind the eagle. Now, there are a couple of ways that we can do this. We can click on these three dots, we can hit intersect with and select background. The only catch with this is that when it selects the background, we've still got a little bit of the eagle's wing in there. We've got all of those branches down at the bottom. So it is still affecting a lot more than just the background because we've got kind of a, a complex scenario here. So I'm gonna delete that one. And what I'm gonna do is what we did in the previous one where I'm going to intersect mask with and then choose a color range. And I'm gonna select a chunk of the sky here. We can hit O so we can see our mask. And then if we need to refine that at all, we can use this refine slider. So you can see if I turn this down too much, this area here beside the eagle is gonna look a little bit funny. If I turn that off, you can see there are dark chunks of sky next to him. Whereas if I refine it a little bit more, it's gonna kind of give me a, a better selection in this case. And you gotta just, move this up and down until you feel like you're not getting any weird artifacts around your selection. Just as a quick aside, the reason that this function actually works so well in this case is because of how uniform the background was. Because it literally is all the exact same color and brightness, it's easy to make a selection, almost like a blue screen or a green screen. So now we've got this kind of glowing light coming from behind the eagle, and we can mess with that more if we want to, if we want to intensify it at all. It kind of creates a bit of a vignette and it almost looks like a studio photo. Like you specifically put a light that would light up the background in a kind of vignette scenario, but without affecting anything in the foreground. Really stylized and definitely won't be for everybody because it doesn't look real. It's definitely like got a fake kind of studio like setup type of look, but I think it's really interesting. So now we're gonna move on to the third version of this photo, which is one of my favorite things to do. And that is to create create a fake sun effect. So what we're gonna do here is add another radial gradient, but we're gonna do it from the side that the sun is actually coming from this time. So not like behind the eagle like last time. And we're just gonna make a big ol' orb that gradually fades out. Again, our feather is set to 100 here, so it's nice and soft as it goes across this frame. We're going to crank up the exposure. This is very similar to what we saw with the linear gradient on the first one. We're gonna actually increase the temperature to a more warm tone, so it looks more like a sunshine. And then one thing that I like to do if I'm trying to do more of a sunshine look, almost like kind of a lens flare, is I will take my dehaze and I'll turn it down. So it kind of hazes out a little bit of the photo. But once again, as you can see, it's affecting a lot of the eagle and a bunch of the branches down here. It's fairly intense in the top right, and then it kind of gradually fades out throughout to the bottom left in a circle formation. So it does kind of have that circular sunshine kind of vibe. Now, in this case, we could just go in and subtract and do the select subject again, so that it would take away everything that it's affecting the eagle itself. But what I actually want to do in this case is keep some of those edits on the eagle and on the branches, but just a bit lower in intensity than they are on the background. This will help a lot to make the background and the foreground feel like they're connected together. So I want the sunshine to be hitting the eagle in the branches, but just not as much as it is when we're looking at it like this. So what I'm gonna do is on this mask, I am going to go to my three dots here and I'm gonna intersect mask with color range. And 
I'm gonna select my sky again. This is all stuff that we've seen before. I'm going to refine a little bit here. And then I'm gonna go to my mask layer here. I'm gonna click on the three dots and I'm gonna go duplicate mask one, just like before, it's just intensified it. We've just doubled down. But this time on my intersected mask of the color range of blue, I'm going to invert that or uninvert it in this case. So it's not technically just the inverse of the other one because the inverse would be intense in the bottom left and less so up in the top right. This is still using that radial gradient. It's just now only intersecting with the pieces that aren't the background. And this way, what we can do is we can use our mask layer amount slider. So again, we've got the same edits that we did on mask one here, because I just duplicated the layer. So we've got the same exposure and temperature settings. And what I can do is just dial back the amount until it more suits what I want to be affecting the eagle itself. So that's before and that's after. So it's still getting a little bit of that quote unquote sunshine look that we've got added to it, but it's not nearly as much as it was previously when I wasn't using the uh, intersect masks. So we've got before and after using our sunshine. A quick disclaimer about these techniques. You may have loved how some of the photos turned out or you may have hated them, but that's not really the point. The point is that hopefully you can take some of the techniques that I showed you and some of the tools and functions inside Lightroom and apply them to your own photos and make them even better than before. I don't use these tools on every photo and when I do, it's always customized to that specific photo. So go have some fun with it and see what you can come up with. If at any point in the video, I went too fast or if you have questions feel free to watch the video again or leave me a comment down below and I will try my best to help. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing and I'll see you next time. What do you think we should name the eagle? I mean they probably have a name already but it's probably like seems like an eagle name to me.